So now we have some thermal profiles built and cases built, what we can do is we can use these inside our annular pressure buildup modules um, to calculate what the potential APB is um, during different scenarios. So we actually have two different modules here. We have allowable APB, where the program will calculate based on um, the inputs you've edit, uh, entered in the case and design and the stress calculator. Now, what is the allowable APB allowed in that string before you run into problems? And then secondly, we have the APB analysis, where you can enter in the conditions and the thermal profiles, and it'll tell you how much APB that will create. And then what we want to do is make sure that the APB analysis is um, below our allowable APB. Um, if not, then we need to do something to fix that, and I'll show you how we go about that. So for allowable APB, um, some people do find the screen confusing because we're talking about inner and outer strings, different annuli, um, and then inner and outer annuluses. It's so the easiest way to get your mind around the way that the um, software structures things is to come across your sidekick, right click, show annular label. So now we've got our A, B, C, D, and E annuli, and these relate to these five annuli across the top. We then have an inner and an outer string. So for this A annulus, the inner string would be our tubing, the outer string would be this tie back, and the same for each other string, subsequent string. When we're talking about inner annulus and outer annulus, they differ. You see the names change here depending on when you're, whether you're talking about the inner string and the outer string. So for the inner string, which is the tubing, the inner annulus is the annulus inside the annulus of interest, which would be what, what fluid is actually inside the tubing at the time. And the outer annulus is the annulus of interest, which is the A annulus that we're interested in. So then this is the, the methodology we use throughout um, the whole of the APB modules. So when you first open up allowable APB, um, what the program does is it takes worst case scenarios. So it'll often reduce fluids back to base fluid, um, which would be worst case in production, um, and then gives you the option of mudline leak. So I often get questions on what mudline leak is. So I would come across to my help file, um, scroll down here, and then we've got a great explanation of what mudline leak is. It's um, whether to base the starting pressure at the top of the string on a seawater hydrostatic, or the trap pressure at the hangar. And there's two different thoughts throughout the industry of what people want to do, so we give the user the option of doing both. And we do have some instructions of how to use the allowable APB module, um, but this quick look should be good enough. So we can look at each string individually, and then along the bottom, it tells us what our inner string collapse is, our outer string burst is, and then what our allowable APB is based on the lower of the two. We also have a summary, which summarizes all of the annuli and the cal calculated allow allowable APB. Um, most of these numbers seem quite normal, um, except this D annuli, which is down here, um, only has an inner string of collapse of 264 um, PSI. So we could look at D, C to make sure that the program hasn't um, been far too conservative, make some changes. If we say that the D annulus doesn't go back to base fluid density, then very quickly our allowable APB goes up to um, 4,000. But that might not be the case, depending on the situation. So when a user's de designing a well or checking a well or reviewing a well, then they need to make sure to select the correct inputs here to get the allowable APB module to work.